Recent uh, approaches in understanding neuroimaging data have emphasized the interconnectivity of different areas and identified functional networks of brain areas that tend to be active together. And so three uh, that have been particularly focused on include the salience network that involves kind of affective or hot uh, motivational and emotional kinds of areas, including the anterior cingulate cortex, the amygdala, the insula. So these are areas that involve kind of identifying important relevant things in the world to pay attention to. Um, and one of the most fascinating is the default network. Um, which is so-called because uh, in the absence of, you know, anything else requiring you to focus on something else externally, this is kind of where your brain likes to go. It goes there by default. And in fact, when you have people in the brain scanner trying to do your task, often they'll kind of switch back into this default mode. Also not shown here, including the hippocampus and these kind of medial parietal areas that are very interesting. So this is posterior cingulate cortex, retrosplenial cortex, uh, various other kind of more dorsal uh, parietal areas interconnected with these episodic uh, control areas in the uh, frontal network, um, area 10 and areas surrounding that. And so these interconnect with the hippocampus to actually engage in episodic memory retrieval. And so what people tend to do when they're just sitting there is just think about past events that are salient to them and kind of mind wander, run through the events of the day, think about future events. And in fact, one thing we see from this is that when we try to think about future events, we often rely on recall of prior events. So episodic memory is very much used to think about how we're going to do things in the future. Finally, we have the control network, and this is kind of the classic network that you see almost every cognitive psychology task uh, that requires people to sort of do some particular sensory motor mappings and, and some particular kind of task shows activity of this network over and over again. It seems to be a very general purpose uh, kind of uh, control system that allows people to focus their eyes through the frontal eye fields uh, and task planning through these dorsal lateral prefrontal areas, again, interacting with the more lateral areas of the parietal lobe uh, in these frontal parietal circuits. Uh, and we think that these parietal areas are encoding predictions of you know, potential plans of action, also sites of control for uh, attentional, top-down attentional focus, etc. So, so these three networks uh, anti-correlate with each other. They, they tend to not overlap as much, um, and then they have these strong correlations within them. And so that is something we've discovered, people have discovered in the context of uh, neuroimaging that gives us some more insight into how brain areas work together in ways that might be not what you originally would have thought, but uh, very interesting and makes sense in retrospect. Now we'll continue by talking about uh, the notion of hierarchy and how the general organization and flow of information proceeds from one layer to the next. And this we saw already in the networks chapter is a critical element of neural computation, allowing higher levels in the network to become more abstract, have higher level, more behaviorally relevant representations. And so this is illustrated here in the case of the classic what versus where pathways, where information comes in in the back of the brain in area V1, and then goes through a series of successive processing layers. And uh, finally resulting up here in these infratemporal areas, TE, TEO, having react object representations. The dorsal pathway, important for sensory motor transformations going up into the parietal lobe, is somewhat less deeply hierarchically organized and has multiple different pathways. In fact, recent uh, evidence suggests there may be three parallel pathways through the dorsal uh, stream. One for eye movement related stuff, another for reaching, and another for whole body navigation. This diagram from Markov et al, including David Van Essen as one of the authors, this follows up on the famous Fellman and Van Essen uh, diagram based directly on those patterns of feedforward and feedback connectivity that, again, we looked at in chapter 
three uh, and shows you the ventral pathway, the what pathway on the left in blue, and the dorsal pathway here uh, on the right. One notable uh, addition to this more recent update to this diagram is that this frontal area 8L, which is actually the frontal eye fields um, up in frontal cortex, is hierarchically organized and properly placed way down here in the very lowest levels of the visual hierarchy. And that may be very important for guiding uh, visual attention and directing uh, visual saccades based on low level topographically mapped information. Sometimes the hierarchy places these things in these areas in different positions relative to their actual kind of anatomical location in the brain. The very highest levels of this hierarchy up here then feed into the hippocampus and the prefrontal cortex. And so uh, another advantage of these hierarchical processing streams is that those higher level areas are able to process very kind of high level compact summaries of all of the more detailed visual information. So these are some of the ways in which hierarchies, which are very a strong feature of the human cortex, makes, makes a big difference. Interestingly, if you look at rodent cortex, it's much flatter. It has much less of this kind of hierarchical structure and is more like a single big hidden layer. Um, and so that is definitely something that's happened over evolution to develop these more abstract high level representations that we operate on compared to rodents. And as we talked about in our network chapter, this is our summary diagram showing this progression from low level oriented edge detectors in V1, progressively getting more and more complex spatially invariant uh, detectors as we go up higher to have these high level behaviorally relevant categories up in the higher levels of IT. So this is kind of what that what pathway along the ventral stream is really doing.